ay hindi ang pangunahing posisyon o pahayag ng pamumunuhan ng organisasyong ito. The views and opinions expressed in this live report are those of the presenter and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of the management of this organization. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our editorial episode for this day. Today is Wednesday, February 23, 2022. I am Carlos Miguel Kanahashi, and together with me is Sir Mark Betita for our technicals. And we're broadcasting simultaneously on Inkul Radio and to be viewed on the next day on the Hands in Inclusion Philippines YouTube channel. We shall commence our presentation in just a moment and we will be back after our commercials. Now this.
Para sa aking pamilya. Para sa aking kapwa. At para sa bayan. Kahit mahirap. Kahit masakit. Mahal ko kayong lahat. Kahit anong mangyari. Ikaw. Ako. Tayo. Ating isisigaw sa Sibong may tatahak Ang at buhay Matapang pagit tayo Ang tropa, hindi nang iiwan. Ang sengas, isang instrumento. Ilang beses matumba, tayo huling baba. Luman ang ating pinagaling. Tayo ay muli. Welcome back to Editorial. This afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, we will discuss to you uh, another topic in relation to Down syndrome. How can we advocate for Down syndrome? So, without further ado, let us present to you our PowerPoint for our podcast for this day, Advocacy for Down Syndrome. Sir Mark, can you please uh, share screen, please? Thank you. Okay. Next slide, please. Okay. What is Advocacy for Down Syndrome? When we say advocacy for Down syndrome, what does this mean? Why do we need to promote advocacy for Down syndrome in our country? And how can we be how can advocates show promotion for advocating Down syndrome? So without further ado, here now is our topic advocacy for Down syndrome. Next slide, please. So, ladies and gentlemen, people with Down syndrome have the same human rights as everyone else. Human rights are the basic rights and freedoms that belong to everyone in the world, from life until death. This applies regardless of who you are and the way you were, what you believe, or how you choose to live your life. Human rights can never be taken away, although they can sometimes be restricted. For example, if a person breaks the law or in the interest of national security, why do we need these rights? It's because, ladies and gentlemen, they are based on shared values like dignity, fairness, equality, respect, and independence. These values are reflected and defined and also protected by law. Next slide, please. The United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, or the UNCRPD, took effect 
on May 3, 2008. It was adopted by the United Nations General Assembly on December 13, 2006. And the purpose of this convention is to promote, protect, and ensure fundamental freedoms and the equal and enjoyment of all human rights by persons with disabilities and to promote respect to the inherited dignity. And that's why, ladies and gentlemen, based on the provisions of the United Nations of the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, this is done through a principle of nothing about us without us. Why? Because the purpose of this is to show that we advocate for everyone, including persons with disabilities. And also to enjoy all the rights and privileges of persons with disabilities in the world that we live in. Next slide, please. Okay. The convention has adopted response to the fact that although pre-existing human rights conventions often Rather, it was done that pre-existing human rights conventions offer considerable potential and to promote, to protect the rights of persons with disabilities. People with disabilities continue being denied their human rights and their potential was not being tapped. Why? Because they were kept on the margins of society in all over the world, in some parts only. The convention states the legal obligations of all the members of the United Nations to promote and to protect the rights of persons with disabilities. Next slide, please. It was also a response to an overlooked development challenge. 10% of the world's populations are people with disabilities, based on an approximate over 700 million persons, approximately 80% of whom live in developing countries. Principally, the United Nations Convention of the Rights of Persons with Disabilities recognizes that persons with disabilities have inherent rights and that they're capable of claiming those rights and making decisions of for their lives based on their free and informed consent as well as being active members of the society. Next slide, please. 
let us define what is an ad the difference between advocacy and self advocacy what is advocacy ladies and gentlemen advocacy is acting with or on behalf of people with down syndrome to resolve issues need support or help or to promote a change in practices or policies Advocacy is essential for promoting and protecting civil and human rights of persons with Down syndrome and to establish, maintaining, or improving their way of life or their quality of life. Individuals and organizations can be advocates for Down syndrome and the organizations work with advocates in countries throughout the world to share knowledge and to offer information, advice, and support with the ultimate aim of improving their quality of life for people with Down syndrome and to promote their inherent right to be accepted and to be included as valued and equal members of their communities. Next slide, please. So, as what we have mentioned in our previous podcast about what self-advocate is. What is a self-advocate? It is the ability to speak up for yourself and the things that are very important to you. Self-advocacy means we have to know your rights, your obligations and your responsibilities you have the right to speak up for your rights and you are able to make choices and decisions that affect your life the goal of self-advocacy is for you to decide what you want then develop and to carry out your plans to help you get it when you have advocacy skills that are very good you have the right to to be empowered to speak up for yourself and to make decisions about your life. People with Down syndrome may need to support the advocates of becoming effective self-advocates. Next slide, please. How can we promote advocacy, especially self-advocates of persons with disabilities? First, be an advocate, not an adversary. Second, know your purpose and know your audience. Why? Because everyone has a unique perspective. And you need to understand the perspectives of a person that you are dealing with. You should, as a self-advocate, we need to continue to act like a neutral person, meaning yung hindi dapat nakikisaw-saw sa politika. Give this person credit and praise for every great idea. Be ready, willing, and able to provide as much information as it is necessary to follow through the idea or request. Put important requests in writing and provide a timeline. Allow a reasonable time for requests to be processed. Follow up with telephone conversations and letters. Bring a friend, an advocate, or a family member to meetings when you need someone to take notes, to bear witness, and just be there for emotional support. Next slide, please. Before you have a meeting or appointment list of points should be prepared and the purpose of this is to ask 
questions. Plan your responses to any questions that you can anticipate. If you get what you want, express gratitude. Why? Because it, this is true, ladies and gentlemen, even if the person should have done it without the intervention. Everyone responds to appreciation. Remember that self-advocacy is something we do every day in our lives. Sometimes the issues are national. Sometimes they're personal, but they're always important because they're about our kids. Next slide, please. Advocacy allows any person the opportunity as an individual to assist in protecting the rights and in removing obstacles for those individuals with Down syndrome. Whether you want to become active individually or as a part of the group or on the local or national level, we hope you find this information helpful. Ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so the reason why, ladies and gentlemen, we need to show advocacy for Down syndrome because according to the United Nations, Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, everyone should have the right to promote, protect, and ensure the full and equal enjoyment of all human rights. And also, we have the right to speak up for advocacy and also to promote self-advocacy as well. Ladies and gentlemen, and that's why this month in the Philippines, uh, we celebrate the National Down Syndrome Consciousness Month. And that's why as advocates, we need to continue to be an advocate, know your purpose, act like a neutral person, meaning yung hindi dapat nakikisaw-saw sa politika, meaning you should not be involved with politics or partisan views, ladies and gentlemen. And also, you have the right to speak up and also to advocate persons with autism, Down syndrome, and other persons with disabilities because we need to do this in our lives. How? Representing our organizations in events related to Down syndrome and persons with disabilities and also to be a self-advocate. Next slide, please. Now we have finished our topic. Let us move on to our updates in relation to the 2022 national and local elections. It's Pulso 2022 updates in the 2022 national elections. Okay, our news for the day in relation to our election update is that Pulse Asia and uh, wait wait rather In relation to election 2022, 
updates a lawyer formally asked the Commission on Elections to amend the Oplan Baklas policy. A veteran election lawyer asked Comelec to suspend the rules regarding the display of campaign posters by private citizens. In a letter addressed to Comelec, Romulo Makalintal formally urged Comelec to temporarily suspend or halt the implementation of Oplan Baklas. Requested temporary suspension will give the Commission on Elections ample time to review its regulations and the same be fully clarified in order to ensure a uniform standard and policy for the campaign activities when the campaign period for the latter starts on March 25 this year. Makalintal currently works for the camp of Lani Robredo. He told ABS-CBN News that he found his letter in his personal capacity as an election lawyer. Under the resolution, Comelec immediately ordered the removal, destruction, or confiscation of prohibited propaganda materials. That's why such action is so arbitrary and a clear violation of one constitutional right to property and due process. So clearly, the provisions of posting election campaign materials provided under the resolution number 10730 and the amendments of section 9 of the RA9006. So that's why the COMELEC said that complaints against Oplan Baklas have been tackled by the Unblank Bank, adding their open to review the directive. Watchdog Legal Network for Truthful Elections maintained that COMELEC cannot regulate posters that contain advocacies as these are legitimate exercises of freedom of expression. And that concludes our election 2022 updates. Let us have our next part of our show, Sino Ka? Know Your Candidates in the 2022 Elections. Our featured candidate for today, next slide please. His name is Dick Gordon. He's running for senator this year in the 2022 elections. He studied in Lord's Catholic School in 1958. He is a 1962 graduate and a 1966 graduate of Ateneo de Manila University. He is he was served as the board brand manager of Procter and Gamble between 1966 and 1967. He pursued a bachelor of law degree in UP College of Law in 1975. He is the delegate, the former delegate of the 1971 Constitutional Convention from 1971 to 1972. He was the former mayor of Olongapo City from 1980 to 1986 and again from 1988 to 1993. He was the former chairman and administrator of the Subic Bay Metropolitan Authority from 1992 the 1998, the former Secretary of Department of Tourism from 2001 to 2004, the current Senator of the Philippines since 2016, and again, and before that, 2004 to 2010, and he's the current Chairman of the Philippine Red Cross. So vote Dick Gordon for the elections this May. Vote wisely. Next slide, please. So ladies and gentlemen, here are some of our very important announcements. Next slide, please. Oh, okay, we're going to this slide, please. Okay. As part of our continuing efforts to support our organization, ladies and gentlemen, we urge everyone to purchase our products in our Hands in Inclusion Philippines online shop. So the products that we are selling are our One Inclusion Nation t-shirts, and our tote bags. Okay, so our prices of our One Inclusion Nation t-shirts, our tote bags, and the Talano Gold Colored One Inclusion Nation t-shirts are as follows. For the One Inclusion Nation t-shirt, is available in red, black, blue, white, and yellow. All sizes were 275 pesos. For the Talano Gold Colored, 
limited edition, one inclusion Asian t-shirts. Sizes are ranged between small to XL and prices are ranged between 325 to 350 pesos. For our one inclusion Asian tote bags, these are available in white and black. Sizes are ranged between medium to large and prices are ranged between 150 to 200 pesos. For our price in the t-shirts, 275 pesos. So how can you order? Payment first before purchase. For accepting payments from GCash, and we will deliver your ordered products via GoGo Express and LBC as well. Next slide, please. Ladies and gentlemen, the Hands in Inclusion Philippines online shop is temporarily closed for areas under alert level 5, but it will continue to serve in areas under alert level 1 to 4 only. Its operating hours are from 12 midnight to 11.59 in the evening. For a full list of orders, please visit the Hands in Inclusion Philippines Facebook page or email us at hansi.inclusion at gmail.com. Next slide, please. So, also again, as part of our continuous efforts in supporting our organization, we urge everyone to donate to Hands in Inclusion Philippines as well, ladies and gentlemen. To be honest, ladies and gentlemen, many of us are struggling with our financial problems in our organization. Sa totoo lang, medyo nahirapan kami sa ating mga pinansyal at nagkakaproblema na tayo sa ating pinansyal, ladies and gentlemen. So, regardless, no matter what, it doesn't really matter if the amount is smaller or larger. It will be appreciated for you guys to help Hands in Inclusion Philippines as well. How can you do this? Scan and donate using GCash on this QR code that is flashed on your screen. Through the Barya Para Sa Inclusion Fundraising Project, we urge everyone to donate using an Alcansha or a coin bank. Any amount can do, and you may donate it using Union Bank as well. And you will also use this in one of our purchases in the online shop. If you want to get the QR codes for GCash and Union Bank, please check our Inclinihan Facebook page and the Hands in Inclusion Philippines Facebook and Instagram pages as well. So, ladies and gentlemen, what are you waiting for? Please, please, please lang. Please continue to help Hands in Inclusion Philippines for its fundraising project. The purpose of this is to make sure that we are aiming to raise funds in our organization. Let us have the time to rebuild in order for us to have a bigger, better, and a bolder Hands in Inclusion Philippines. Proceeds from the sales and fair donations to Hands in Inclusion will go to us here in this hall for the formality, for the expenses, as well as the financial aid of the members due to the effect of this trying time. So guys, for those who did this, you'll be glad you did. And for those who did this, Thank you for your continuous generosity and for your support to the organization. Next slide, please. But before we go on to our next slide, if you want to buy some accessories, then you may check the Facebook page of Ate Lady Jean Florese on L. Jean Accessories. You may also see her, her contact details. 0951-791-3194. Or 0916-167-4803. If, if you're interested to buy accessories from um, Lady Jane Flores. Also, if you have any problems with your computer, regardless if it's a PC, a laptop, a desktop computer, regardless if the brand is Apple or Mac, or if your phone is or tablet is Android or iPhone, or if you want to download games, music, or movies, then you may message Sir Mark Vitita on Mark PC Laptop Repair Services on his Facebook name, Mark Paolo Vitita, and you may contact him at 0947 355 4759. 
So for those who want to do it, you may message him so that he'll be happy to help you as well. Next slide, please. Okay, we have one more event coming up for the month of February in Best Buddies, Philippines. On February 26 at 4 p.m., it is Ice Cream Social. And after February 26, stay tuned for the events for the month of March in Best Buddies, Philippines. If you want to join the event for our last Best Buddies, Philippines event this Saturday for the month of February, and if you want to join for next month, then follow Best Buddies Philippines on Facebook and Instagram, send them a message, and they will send you the registration form and the link as well. And this will also be viewed live on the Best Buddies Philippines Facebook page as well. In Best Buddies Philippines, make a friend, be a friend. Next slide, please. So we urge everyone to continue supporting Project Sold Out. We'd like to thank Special Achievers, Hirai Gallery, and all the partner organizations for making this event possible. If you want to check this out, please check Special Achievers Facebook page as well. Next slide, please. So we, if you are feeling hungry, especially for your breakfast, for your lunch, your dinner, for your merienda, or for any occasion, if it's a birthday or Christmas, party or any anniversaries they may want to order some of the foods from the sobra comfort food restaurant and the kuya korea restaurant for the sobra comfort food restaurant ladies and gentlemen our menus are for the all-day breakfast tapa sobra chicken tocino corned beef brisket homemade spam and beef something cow. sizes arranged between solo to large and prices arranged between 265 pesos to 1,450 pesos. Next slide, please. For our rice trays, we have beef bulgogi, beef shawarma, beef yudon, pork crackling bits, pork belly burnt ends, charred chicken, and boneless fried chicken. Sizes are ranged between solo to large and prices are ranged between 265 pesos to 1,700 pesos. Next slide, please. For our fried chicken sandwich, we have the Ono fried chicken sandwich, the Mmm fried chicken sandwich, Uncle Bird's fried chicken sandwich, Old Pro sandwich, corned beef and chicken tocino sandwich. Sizes are ranged between regular, large, solo, and box of course, and prices are ranged between 320 pesos to 1,540 pesos. Next slide, please. For our pasta, we have mac and cheese and penne and gorgonzola. Sizes are ranged between solo to large and prices are ranged between 290 pesos to 1,450. It's 1,350 pesos, rather. Next slide, please. If you want to order in the Sobra Comfort Food restaurant, head over to the Sobra Comfort Food website. Select the dishes you want to order. Choose between pick-up or delivery. Pay conveniently to any of the safe integrated payment methods and your order is confirmed. Expect updates via text or your email as well. Next slide, please. If you want to crave for something Korean, then you want to order some of their foods from the Kuya Korea restaurant. For the menus for the Kuya Korea restaurant, we have beef bibimbap, beef bulgogi, pork sambuk, and K-pop chicken rice bowls. Prices are ranged between 195 to 220 pesos. For the chicken, for the boneless popcorn chicken, sizes are ranged between half to whole, and prices are ranged between 235 to 435 pesos with the flavors of gochu, ganjang, chicken, and k buffalo. If you want to order there, please check the Kuya Korea website for your orders as well. Next slide, please. Lastly, follow Hands in Inclusion Philippines, our organization, on our social media pages and its digital platforms as well. It will be appreciated for you guys to do this as early as now. Follow us on Facebook, Hands in Inclusion PH, Inclu Radio, Inclu Sports, Inclu Nihan, and the online shop. Instagram, Hands in Inclusion PH, 
Pumu, HNI Philippines, Twitter, HNI Filipinas, and subscribe to our Hands in Inclusion Philippines YouTube channel. So guys, for those who did this, thank you very much as well. Okay, next slide, please. Let us have our shout outs and greetings to Sir Mark Bitita and Lady Jane Florese. Good evening to you. Thank you for watching. Uh, to our those who are celebrating their birthdays today, happy birthday to Nareen Uy and Bea Aguila of Best Buddies Benil. And to all those who are celebrating their birthdays today, happy birthday and expect the more birthdays to come. To those who are celebrating their anniversaries, happy anniversary as well. Shout outs and greetings to my family, to Hands and Inclusion Philippines, Best Buddies Philippines, Best Buddies Benil, and other PWD organizations, and as well as to my high school and college friends. And to those who are watching, it may be a good morning, good afternoon, or good evening wherever you are in the world. I hope you guys are in a good mood, but if not, you may use this time to improve on your mental health and your well-being as well. To those who are watching us on Eagle Radio, thank you very much as well. And if you missed this episode, it will be premiered on the next day on the Hands and Inclusion Philippines YouTube channel for your viewing pleasure. Next slide, please. So before we end our show, I'd like to share with you a quote for the day from Gina Murchie Barber. Every one of us is like the pieces of a puzzle each one unique and with our own special place where only we can fit. Without every one of us, the picture wouldn't be complete. Okay, Sir Mark Petita, can you um, disable the share screen, please? Okay. So, before we leave, uh, what, what, what we have learned for this day is that as advocates for persons with disabilities, especially persons with Down syndrome, we need to be to show advocacy regardless of who we are and the way we work. And also to make sure that as self-advocates, we urge everyone to be an advocate, the right to speak or speak up as well, and also to act like a neutral person. I hope you guys learned something from this episode. Again, to those who are watching us, thank you very much as well. Okay. Sir Mark, on cam, please. Okay. That's a wrap for our editorial episode for Wednesday, February 23, 2022. I'll be back again tomorrow. At the same time, for the Inclusive Report Thursday edition. On behalf of Inclu Radio and Hands in Inclusion Philippines, I am your host, Carlos Miguel Kanahashi, and together with me for our tech, Sir Mark Betita, may awa ang Diyos, makakaraos po tayo. Sama-sama tayong lalaban para sa pangarap, pamilya, at bayan, hanggang sa ating tatak para sa One Inclusion Nation. Muli, magandang gabi. May the mighty God bless us all. Pagpalainawa tayo ng poong kapal. Pilipinas, God first. H-N-I, God first. Thank you very much for watching. Have a blessed evening to all and a bye and a goodbye for now. Bye-bye. Thank you, Sir Mark. As well. See you tomorrow.